Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Chem 170, Organic Chemistry, with your host, Dr. White. I hope you all enjoy this rainy, cloudy Wednesday afternoon. All right. As promised, today I will be going through the carboxylic acid and ester problem set. I'll continue on and finish up the amide section, and then we'll do the lab. I looked at the syllabus, and two weeks from today will be test number three. Uh, sometime next week, I'll post the breakdown on test number three, but it will be almost identical to test number two point-wise in terms of general knowledge, nomenclature, reactions. And if, I think it would be something like 10, 35, 60. Same thing point-wise within one or two points as test number two, but this test will cover obviously carboxylic acids, uh, carboxylic anions, esters, amines, amides, and also quaternary ammonium salts, and a whole bunch of interesting stuff. But before I get started, I have to ask, anybody pick up a bottle of vinegar and think, wow, this contains acetic acid? That's a carboxylic acid? Anybody pick up a bottle of ketchup or mustard or relish or even a jar of pickles and see that contains vinegar, which contains acetic acid, which is a carboxylic acid. Or did you happen to, I guess this one would be, bite into a hot pepper and think, wow, that contains capsaicin, which is an amide? Or did you pick up a bottle of nail polish remover and see it has ethyl acetate, which is an ester? Speaking about esters, hopefully soon we'll be able to smell the flowers coming soon. And when you smell flowers, remember you're smelling esters. Or then one more thing about organic chemistry in your daily life. Do you happen to use a fabric softener and think about the fact that that's a quaternary ammonium salt? Remember that's near and dear to my heart. Remember organic chemistry is all around you and it won't hurt for you to think about it. Trust me, I'm a doctor, did that work? Oh, by the way, this is all around you. I stole from SpongeBob. All right, let's get going. And before we get going, uh, just a reminder, remember in my class, my world, there's no such thing as a dumb question. And one more reminder, remember tonight from 5 to 6.15 on Zoom, I will have my office hour. All right, everybody see carboxylic acids, esters, problems set on your screen. Thumbs up, people. Thank you, Krista and others who came after him. All right, let's look at the following. Nomenclature question, give the IUPAC name for the following. Again, look for what's different, what's not a carb carbon single bond or a carbon oxygen atom. Ooh, a carbon oxygen, carbon hydrogen atom, I'm getting ahead of myself. Two oxygens here to the same carbon, double bond and a hydrox group carbons here. That's a carboxylic acid. How do you name a carboxylic acid? Find the longest chain with the carbonyl carbon, carbon double bond to oxygen, name it as an alkane, four carbons, butane, drop the E, add the letters OIC, and the word acid. Now, this is the one carboxylic acid that the common name became the IUPAC name, and this is benzoic acid. And here, six carbons, hexanoic. All right, now when you have an alkyl group on the chain R of the carboxylic acid, remember the carbonyl carbon is always one. Carbonyl carbons rock. But anyways, and you don't put that in the name, but that's where you start numbering. So this one, the longest chain, five pentane, drop the OIC and add the word acid, pentanoic acid. Oh, look, on carbon-4, it's your old friend, the methyl group. And why is it carbon-4? Because the carbonyl carbon is 1. 
And if we look at E, and by the way, if I run up past one that you would like me to do, always feel free to ask. And here, what's the longest chain? Nine, no name, drop the E, replace with OIC in the word acid, no no acid. And then on carbon four is an isopropyl group, carbon seven is an ethyl. Now I have seven ethyl, four isopropyl. However, if you had put down four isopropyl, seven ethyl, I would have marked it correct. Now here we have a carboxylate anion. And we use similar to the ester, find the longest chain. When R is not a benzene ring, which in this case it isn't, the longest chain is three, propane. Drop the E for esters and carboxylate anions, add the letters O, A, T, E. And then for carboxylate anions, the cation you name is the element it comes from, which is sodium. Now, when R is a benzene ring, like in G, what do you have to do? Well, now you use the old, or I wouldn't say old, the official IUPAC way. What carboxylic acid does this come from? Benzoic acid. Drop the IC in the word acid and add ATE, and you get benzoate. And the cation is still named as the element it comes from, potassium benzoate. Remember, sodium benzoate is a preservative used in pot. Remember, Dr. White comes from Chicagoland. I've been here almost all my life. And we call the stuff that's carbonated in a can or bottle that's non-alcoholic pop, not soda. By the way, Dr. White loves Werner's and Dr. Pepper. Used to be a seven up person, but I moved away from that and really zeroed in on Werner's. All right. Now, ooh, what do we have here? We have a carbonyl, carbon double bond to oxygen, and carbon also has an oxygen, but now instead of a hydrogen, it has an R prime group, CH2, CH3. Now in the carbonyl group, we have a two carbons. This is an ester. How do you name an ester? The R prime group, the alkyl group on the oxygen, you name in the front is an alkyl group, ethyl. And then if R, which is attached to carbonyl carbon, is not benzene, you name how many carbons the longest chain, including the carbonyl carbon, and that's three, propane, drop the E, add O-A-T-E, and you have ethyl propanoate. Say that five times quickly. No, you don't have to. Now, when R in an ester, which this is, is a benzene ring, then you have to, like we did with sodium, potassium benzoate, with this as an ester, and you name the back part right here as the, what would be the carboxylic acid instead of CH3, if that were H, what would you call that? Benzoic acid. Drop the IC in the word acid and ATE, benzoate, but the R prime, you name the front as an alkyl group. And here, one more, the longest chain, eight octane, drop the E, this is an ester. And how do you know that? Quick review. When you have a carbonyl carbon, carbon double bond oxygen with an R group, hydrox group, that's a carboxylic acid. When you have a carbonyl group, oxygen on the oxygen, there are carbons. On the carbonyl carbon, there's carbons. That's an ester. And finally, what we're going through this problem set. When you have a carbonyl carbon with an R group, oxygen minus on the carbonyl carbon, and a metal or any cation, really, 
this is a carboxylate anion, and some people call it a carboxylate salt. Because technically it is a salt. And if you taste it, some of the smaller ones taste salty, like sodium chloride. All right, now, draw the condensed structures for the following organic molecules. Now, here you have to know both the common and the IUPAC names. And just to remind you, the only common carboxylic acids that I asked you to learn. This one is formic acid. That's the common name. The actual name would be methanoic acid, which nobody ever calls, but, and that's mixed with water and heated is the defensive weapon of the fire ants. Next common name you should know this carboxylic acid, acetic acid. And nobody ever calls that except tell you nobody ever calls it that, ethanoic acid. And you mix this with water and you get vinegar. And a common and IUPAC name, which we've already covered, but I'll mention it again. When a carboxylic acid R is a benzene ring, this is called benzoic acid. Now, I have you here on this page. Let's do common esters. And really it's a common ester because I only asked you to learn one structure and name and that's this one. And this is ethyl acetate. Nobody ever calls it by its IUPAC name, which I got to think for a second. Seconds up, ethyl ethanoate. I had to think about it because you'd never use that. It's ethyl acetate. Remember, this is the active ingredient, the main ingredient of nail polish remover. And there are two main organic molecules for nail polish remover. The other is acetone and ketone. And up till a couple of years ago, until the super hard nail polish that you cure, cure is an organic term, make hard with a light. Before that, most nail polish, the percentage of the shell space and say Target, or as my best friend always calls it, that French shore, store, Target, <laughs> but anyways, our Walmart, he doesn't have one for Walmart. Walmart, no, it doesn't make sense. But it does make a lot of doubt. Oh, look, Dr. White's being funny. Awful funny, but funny. Yeah, well, unfortunately, this doesn't work as well as removing the newer nail polish, and therefore now more bottles on the shelf are asked to. But you should know these common names and the structure. And let's get back to the, all right. So if we look at C and the question is draw the condensed structures for the following, A is acetic acid, which I already talked about. Let's look at C. How do you know what to do to decode this? Well, you start from the right, move left. Hexanoic acid, 
Oh, a carboxylic acid. If that were hexane, six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, carbonyl hydroxyl group. And on carbon two is an ethyl group. And I think I might have mentioned this molecule gave me a, about eight weeks of grief when I was, didn't know it was impurity in a bottle of vanaldehyde that I just opened. Uh, bad memories. And E made a little more complex. Again, start at the right, move left, decanoic acid, a carboxylic acid. And if it's an E and drop the OIC in acid, decade, 10 carbons, including a carbonyl carbon, and a carbon two is a methyl. Remember the carbonyl carbon is one. And on carbon four, one of my favorite alkyl groups, the T or tert butyl group. Oh, ooh, I forgot. I did something I shouldn't. Everybody cross off G, cross it off. I promised I'd never put an alkyl group on the R group of an ester and I did. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I just got carried away. All right, let's look at F. You start from the right, move left. OAT ending tells you it's either a carboxylate anion or an ester. In the front, since you don't see the name of an element, but an alkyl group, it's an ester. So propane drop the OAT, you get propane, three carbons. The alkyl group in the front is the R group, R prime on the oxygen. Ethyl acetate was the common name we just went through. Next, oh, I did it again. By the way, J cross off. I won't use magnesium, even though that's correct. I didn't talk about it and I won't get into it. But here we have, oh, if we look at sodium benzoate, OAT ending ester. Now this one comes from the old way, benzoic acid, but notice it has the name of an element in front, not an alpha group. That tells you it's a carboxylate anion and the cation plus charge is sodium. You don't have to show your charges. I always do. All right, let's go through some reactions. This is a big problem set, but there's a lot to do. What do we have in A? What's different? Carbonyl hydrogen, R, aldehyde, oxidize it, comes the carboxylic acid. Time for a commercial from Dr. White. How many bonds to carbon? Four. Remember, that's your friend doing these problems. Do you break carbon, carbon, single bonds? No. Do I need to say that again? Sure. Do you break carbon, carbon, single bonds? No. I should do this. No. That, then I'll confuse you. No, you don't. All right. And notice, if I get to the right screen, And notice here, we start with two carbons, better end up with two carbons bond together. And if you notice, I have more examples. And D, what did I do? I did the chemistry instructor's favorite trick on a test, put a big scary molecule. But if you know what to look for, it's not big and scary, it's just an aldehyde. And this whole big long thing is just an R group comes along for the ride. What changes is aldehyde, the H is replaced with OH. Everything else stays the same. H replaced with OH, aldehyde, carboxylic acid. Now, a really cool way of making a, a carboxylic acid is in E. What do we have? Ooh, what's different? Magnesium bromide on a carbon, RMGX, as say Grignard. Oops, I don't have what X is, but that can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Next, we're reacting with CO2, carbon dioxide, and second step is acid and water. And what do you get? A carboxylic acid that's one carbon longer 
than the R group you start with, because you make that something special, very rare carbon-carbon single bond between the R group and the carbon of CO2. And here I have two carbons, I end up with a total of three. And if we look at, at either F or G, or A, I mean, guess what? Big, scary molecule, but this is an R group attached to MGX. We have one more carbon, longer carboxylic acid. Now, carboxylic acids are base acids. If I react it with a base, sodium hydroxide, the H on the hydroxyl group of the carboxylic acid is acidic. You can lose it as a proton. And therefore, if I take any carboxylic acid reacted with a base of MOH, M can be for this class sodium, potassium, or lithium. You get this carboxylate anion. Again, do you break carbon carbon single bonds? No. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. The only change is here and here. Again, you do not have to put charges down. I always will. And I have a series of the same thing again, just longer R groups. All right, now, everybody, pay attention. Number five, different question. Draw the condensed structures for all, again, all of the products for this problem. And what are we doing? We're reacting this compound with NaHCO3, sodium bicarbonate, baking powder. And what is this we're reacting with? What's different? Carbonyl with hydroxyl and R, carboxylic acid. Acid base reaction, you get the carboxylate anion says all, which is unusual for my uh, questions, but you should know how to do this. Get CO2, carbon dioxide, notice the arrow up, means it's given off as a gas and you get water. So in this case, R is methyl, get sodium acetate, which is the common name for that compound, and then water and carbon dioxide. How many of you remember the little the story I told about the little rocket ship with the candy that was awful, but it was hollow tube once you dumped that out, put some baking powder and vinegar, carboxylic acid, acetic acid, put the cap back on, the CO2 makes the front part go boop. And if your timing's good, and by the way, when I was about five or six, I got it really good, that would go about four or five feet. As a five-year-old little kid, that was so exciting. My father taught me that. And now if you look at B, all I've done is a different R group, but you get this carboxylate anion plus water and CO2. Now let's go. Oh, ah, I did it again. 6A cross off, cross off. 6B, again, I did it, sorry. All right, 6C, we're back on track. Now, question is, give the organic product or products to the following. And if we look at this one, what do we have? What's different? Our carbonyl hydroxyl group, carboxylic acid. Ooh, a second organic molecule, ROH alcohol. H plus is acid catalyst. And what do you get in ester? What's R? Three carbons. What's R prime? One carbon. Remember the carbon in R prime with the hydrox group is the carbon in R prime in the ester this oxygen is bonded to. And you see that in D. You have a carboxylic acid where R is the benzene ring. You have an alcohol where R prime is isopropyl and you get this ester. And I have a number of other examples where I've just changed R and R prime. All right, now, 
you take an ester and let me check something real quick. All right, I have it out of order, but it's still there. I forgot to put the water down, but you still should have been able to do the problem. What do we have here, ester, base and water? What's the reaction? And this could be MOH, or this would be M plus. This would also work for potassium and lithium hydroxide. And you take an ester, react it with a base, you get the carboxylate anion of the carboxylic acid you would have used to make this ester, plus the alcohol you would have used to make that ester. In this case, R is benzene ring, R prime is methyl. Let's go to a little more. Oh, this one. And remember, not the carboxylic acid. There's a carboxylic acid in the presence of base. Oops. Oh, no. I made a mistake. In H, this shouldn't be Na plus. It should be K plus. In H, that should be K plus. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I'm going to go home. Wait, I am home. So make that change, please. All right, let's look at seven. And seven is draw the structure for organic product or products for the following reaction. And here, what do we have? What's different? Anybody having nightmares would me say, ooh, what's different? What's not carbon? What's not hydrogen? But seriously, when I look at a molecule, I scan, look for what's not a carbon-carbon single bond or what's not a carbon or what's not a hydrogen. Ooh, carbonyl, oxygen, R group here, R prime, R ester. Acid and water, remember H plus is acid catalyst. And this is acid hydrolysis for an ester, which we'll come back to later, because this is how your body breaks down fats and oils in your stomach and intestine. And you have acid water. And what do you get back when you react the ester? The carboxylic acid and the alcohol you would have used to make that ester. And here R is three carbons. R prime is isopropyl. And you get this carboxylic acid plus this alcohol. If I do a different R group here, you can even have a benzene ring as R prime. You get this carboxylic acid plus phenol, which is an alcohol. And if you look at C, all I've done is made a more complex R and R prime. Now here, I made a mistake and I've already, I always check the test when I write this test number three to make sure I include the two, but organic chemists, my level would never put the two there because you know it's necessary and we don't balance equations. But here, what's this reaction? What's different in the first chemical? Carbonyl, oxygen on the oxygen, R prime. The carbonyl carbons are ester. We have carbon, the second one, MgCl. That's a Grignard. You have two of them. And remember, X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And you get two products. And here in the problem set, I didn't put plus sign, but on a test, I would to let you know there are two products. And one, you make not one, but two. Yes, two. I better hold on. I'm looking over. I have my monitor, your, my picture for Zoom over here, because there's a lot of stuff over here. And you get not one, but two carbon-carbon single bonds to what was the carbonyl carbon. So first alcohol, what's attached to carbonyl carbon is still there. And you then have two R triple primes and then an alcohol. The R prime on the oxygen of the ester also becomes the alcohol. And here would be for D, the correct answer. And if we look at E, and take a look at this. You're starting with a very simple ester. 
a very simple grin yard. And in one step, you make this very complex alcohol. That's what I call having fun. And I have a couple others. Now, can you keep a secret? Students have trouble with that reaction on test three. So let's practice it again. Let me get my whiteboard up. And this reaction, I'll never give a synthesis problem. Reacting green yards, I never do. It's not fair. Almost forgot to two again. And this is your turn. What would be, and here we're gonna get two products. What would be the two products you would get? You react that molecule first with this right here, and second step acid and water. Your turn. And while you're doing that, I can tell you yesterday when I had some time off, I did my quarterly pilgrimage to my local Costco. It's dangerous walking in that store. So I only go about four or five times a year and stock up. And I dropped about $300 on stuff. And I was good. I didn't even buy any junk food, which is easy in Costco. And when you're done, oh, I should use the poll. I'll give you another 30 seconds before I shoot out the poll. Like I said, for some reason, well, I know the reason it's not the simplest reactions, but students have immense problems with this reaction. All right, it looks like everybody's done. So let's approach this reaction and figure out, first of all, what functional group do we have in this molecule? Ooh, look, look for what's different, what's not carbon or hydrogen, two oxygens. 
you have a carbonyl oxygen, and on this oxygen, R prime, on the carbonyl, R ester. But wait, we're not done. Up here where I have two of something, carbon, 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 magnesium chloride. And that's a Grignard. Remember, X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And second step, acid and water. And what you get, let me write it down here so I have room. Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon, what's attached to it is still attached. Then you make not one, but two carbon carbon single bonds from the Grignard. This is an alcohol. And then this part becomes a second alcohol. So what's our isopropyl? What's our triple prime and propyl? And what's our prime methyl? So let me give myself a little room here. So I'll need it. I have what's attached to my carbonyl isopropyl. Then this will become an alcohol. We're talking about this carbon right here. And then what's my R triple prime? Three carbons. I'll make not one, but two carbon carbon single bonds. And then what's our prime methyl? So I'll get methyl alcohol or methanol. And now there are four bonds to carbon. So I better get to work. So I've got a lot of carbons. And there you go. Those are the two products. Oh, that was fun. Let's do another one. And here's another one for you to have fun with. Oop. That tells you there are two products. What would be the product or products, three points each for the following reaction?
yeah, it's time to vote again. All right, I think everybody's done. So let's take a look at this reaction and look for what's different, what's not carbon, what's not hydrogen, what's not carbon, carbon single bond. Ooh, two oxygens. And one is double bond to ox carbon, carbonyl, and the other oxygen is bonded to that. On the oxygen, we have carbons. I'll call that R prime. On the carbonyl carbon, I'll call that carbons R. So this is R. This is R prime. And then what do we react to? Ooh, two of something. Carbon, carbon, magnesium, bromide. And that's a Grignard. Remember, X can be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. Can I write any smaller? Maybe. And Second step, acid and water. And what do you get? Keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. What's attached to an R is still attached to it, opens up to an alcohol. Then you make not one, but two carbon carbon single bonds from the Grignard. And this part of the ester becomes the second alcohol. So what's our triple prime? Ethyl. So carbonyl carbon, which is now this carbon, has R on it, methyl. As an alcohol, this is an alcohol. Then I make not one, but two carbon-carbon single bonds from my Grignard, and this part becomes this alcohol, which would be ethanol. And that's how you do this reaction. Now, like I said, students have difficulty with this, so and study it and practice it. All right, let's Get rid of this. No, I don't want to do that. What I do want to do is close this. Go to this. And we're talking about amides. And how do you make an amide? And let me show you a better way of showing the slide, which I did on Monday. How do you make an amide? You take a carboxylic acid and react it with either ammonia or amine. And here our prime and our double prime can be hydrogen. And if both are hydrogen, that's ammonia. And if R is hydrogen, R prime is a is R group. It's a primary mean. If both R prime and R double prime are carbons, alkyl groups, it's a secondary mean. And what you form is an amide. Don't forget, in an amide, there are three, yes, three bonds to nitrogen just like in an amine. So let's take this reaction out for a spin. And if we look at the following reaction, what's different? Ooh, carbonyl hydroxyl group carbon, carboxylic acid. Now this is ammonia, but I could also represent it like this.
or r prime and r double prime can be hydrogen. In this case, they are. And what you get is an amide. And what's our methyl? What's our prime and our double prime? Hydrogen. And what do you get? What's attached to carbonyl carbon is still attached to that. But now you get this nitrogen. And both R and R prime are hydrogens. And I can write it that way. And that's how you do it. And let me do one more, and then after the break, I'll let you have some fun too. And here, what do we have that's different? Carbon, carbon, ooh, carbonyl with a hydroxyl group, a carboxylic acid. Remember, these are the building blocks, organic chemists, used to make molecules in your daily life that you buy in different products. Now, what do we have here? Ooh, two methyl groups on nitrogen and hydrogen. That's the secondary amine, which I can write like this. And remember, R prime and R double prime can be Hydrogen. In this case, it's not, but it could be. And you get an amide. So, what's our ethyl? What's our prime and our double prime? Methyl. So, what do we do? Look at the carbonyl carbon. What's attached to it are two carbons is still attached. Carbonyl, then nitrogen. And what's on the nitrogen? Our prime and our double prime. And you could write it this way. Or you could also write it this way, which Dr. White on test would probably do. And that's that amide. And if I look at the clock, whoa. Time flies when you're having fun with carboxylic acids, esters, and amides, which means I'll see you in five minutes. I can get up and stretch. And let's take a break, come back in five. See you in five.
Let's do that again. Sorry about the delay. I have to go downstairs and get another bottle of water. Ta-da. I've got a couple of cases in my utility room. It's cool down there, so it keeps the cool. All right. Before we get back to Amaz, guess what time it is? It's time to play that fun game. Circle and name the functional group two points each. So let's get to it. All right, there you go. Have a lot of fun. Circle and name the functional group. Two points each. I'm not asking you to name the molecule. I'm asking you to name the functional group. Boy, did I give you a lot of fun to do. <laughs> Uh-oh, it's Bad Humor Wednesday. Look out.
whoops, guess what I just noticed? I forgot a hydrogen here. There we go. And take your time. I'll give everybody time to finish. All right, I better get to work. Everybody's done. I thought I'd give you another couple minutes, but oh, I'm so proud of you people. Isn't it nice you're learning organic chemistry? All right, let's do it. Look for what's different, what's not carbon, what's not hydrogen, what's not a carbon-carbon single bond. That's where a functional group will be. And if we look at A, we have, ooh, these oxygens. And we have a carbonyl oxygen. On the oxygen, we have carbons. And on the carbonyl carbons, and this is an ester. And if you have one or less carbons than what I have, that's OK. Let's look at B. What's different? Ooh, oxygen, same carbon, oxygen with a negative charge, and a cation. And for my class, M can be sodium, which in this case it is, potassium, or lithium. And what is this? This is a a carboxylate anion. And if we look at C, ooh, a nitrogen with carbons here and here. That's an amine. And I'm going to write it up here because I have room. And for an amine, you have a nitrogen. Remember, amines have three bonds to it. And a general way of writing amines like I have there, remember our prime and our double prime can be hydrogen. 
Now, if we look here in D, what's there? Ooh, two oxygens again. You get an R group, carbonyl, and OH. This is a carboxylic acid. Should have given myself more room. If you circle the whole molecule, that would be all right. Let's look at E. Oh, a nitrogen with a plus charge and a halogen anion. And how many R groups on that nitrogen? Three plus one, four, which means we have one of Dr. White's favorite functional groups that helped pay my mortgage, a couple of cars, a whole lot of nice things. And this is a quaternary ammonium salt. And the next time you're using a fabric softener, you're using a quaternary ammonium salt. And there's the name right there. And let's go up to four. Ooh, a nitrogen again with a plus charge halogen anion. This also is a quaternary ammonium salt. Oh, look, there's another oxygen's here. And what do we have here? Actually, like that, R carbonyl O R prime ester. And finally, I threw in everything on G almost, but the kitchen sink. Ooh, look for what's different nitrogen on a carbon. That's an amine. Ooh, carbonyl, oxygen, carbons here, carbons here. That's an ester. We're not done. I said I threw almost everything in, but the kitchen sink. We have a carbonyl, carbons here, oxygen, negative charge. And we have a cation, like we have right here. And what do we have here? A carboxylate anion. Or you could also call it a carboxylate salt. And that's how you play that fun game, circle and name the functional group, two points each. I hope you all enjoyed it. Now, we we're talking about the reaction. How do you make an amide? And if you take a carboxylic acid plus an amine, and here our prime and our double prime, both are one or none, can be hydrogen, you form an amide. And it's your turn to have fun with that reaction. Let me leave it on the screen, because remember, Dr. White has the fastest mouse wheel, finger this side, the other side, Mississippi River. And here's one for you to have fun with. What would be the product or products for the following reaction?
And for those of you who have your web camera on, thank you. For those of you who don't have your web camera on, thank you for coming to class. Turn on your webcam. <laughs> Oh, by now, after the distillation lab, I'm going to do a quick, see the picture I used? That's the distillation head that I used in grad school. My good buddy. Now, one thing I didn't mention about this reaction is later in the semester, we'll be coming back to that, this reaction, because this is the reaction Mother Nature uses to make proteins, like your skin, your hair, what's left of my hair, <laughs> and your muscles, and a whole lot of other things, protein you eat from plants and animals, if you're not a vegan or vegetarian. They still use the term vegetarian or is it vegan? Whenever I hear the term vegan, I think of, oh, are you from the planet Venus? <laughs> but anyways, oh, it's real bad humor Wednesday, sorry. All right, let's do this. I think everybody's done. What's different in this reaction? The first molecule, carbonyl, hydroxyl group, R group, carboxylic acid. Ooh, second molecule, nitrogen, which I can write like this. And remember, R prime and R double prime, one or both or none, can be hydrogen. In this case, here's my R group. I'll call this methyl group R prime. And one of these hydrogens is R double prime because one or both can be hydrogens. And what do you get? You get an amide. And what's, keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon that still has carbon double bond to oxygen. What's our methyl? What's our prime? We well, got nitrogen and that's methyl. And you have a hydrogen, which is our double prime. Now, one thing you might see on a test of mine, so I better show it to you, or in books, you might see this molecule written this way. And this hydrogen is brought next to the nitrogen that way. Either one, it's the same molecule, but that's both ways. When the nitrogen has a hydrogen and an amide, you might see it up there. How do you draw it on a test? Either way works for me. I've got a piece of paper from the Board of Regents of Michigan State University saying, I know that. All right, oh, let's do one more. These are fun. Let's do something a little more challenging. Oh, this is challenging, but before you start, everybody look at the whiteboard and you have a benzene ring here and a benzene ring will never react with a amine ever, ever, ever. So I decided to fill you in on that and go ahead, your turn. What would be the product or products for the following?
All right, let's get going. If we look at this, well, we've got a benzene ring here. That's different. But I said that's not going to react with the nitrogen. But if we look at this, we've got a carbonyl with a hydroxyl group and called the benzene ring R, a carboxylic acid. So we'll call it R. And then, here, ooh, nitrogen with not one, but two R groups. They're the same, but they could be different. And this is an amine, primary, secondary, or it could have been ammonia, which is not. Remember, R prime and R double prime can be hydrogen. In this case, it's not, but it could be. And what do you get? What's attached to carbonyl? R is still there. Then you have a nitrogen on nitrogen. Remember, there are three bonds to nitrogen, so you're going to lose the hydrogen. And you have R prime and R double prime. And what I didn't mention, you also get water, but that's an organic, eh, organic chemists are biased against inorganic stuff. So, What's our R group? This benzene ring with a methyl group on it. And this carbon, it goes to carbonyl. This is meta, it's called nitrogen. And this nitrogen, what's our prime and our double prime, the same, ethyl. And I could have also written it this way. Like that because they're two of the same group on nitrogen. Whenever that happens with nitrogen, you can put it in a bracket and put the number two or three, or even four, but not for amides. It's two like that. Now, haven't said in a while, but I better. Why are you taking organic chemistry? And that's the question is, why am I learning this stuff you should be asking? And the obvious answer, which I've gone through already, because I found out the first day, you're taking this class because someone said you had to, so you can get into the school or program. But why really are you learning this stuff? Let's go out on the internet and look at something interesting. Now, in a couple of months, when I start mowing my lawn, especially in the summer, I'm gonna get out there and if I don't have some protection on, I'm gonna get eaten alive by the mosquitoes. When I bought this house a long time ago, the first time I mowed the lawn, I wasn't thinking I got out there Saturday morning about 8.39, started mowing my lawn, and I was eaten alive by the mosquitoes. There are a lot that they, I learned my lesson. So I went to Walmart and bought mosquito repellent. Have you ever wondered what that is? Well, let's take a look at this. Does everybody see DEET on your screen right now? Give me a thumbs up. Thank you. DEET is an acronym for an endimethyl metatulamid or sometimes it's called diethyl 2 amide. And here's this molecule right here. You've got a carbonyl, benzene ring, end of a line is a methyl, and on the nitrogen is two methyls, ethyl groups, I'm sorry, ethyl. Wait, this is an amide, and this is the amide, guess what? You just made. So why are you learning this reaction and these reactions? Because these are used in your daily life. 
This is the active ingredient, the acronym D, in the best mosquito repellent. And this is how you make it, this carboxylic acid and this amine. Now, quick story from Dr. White. <laughs> when I needed, you know, I better get some mosquito repellent. This was not fun because I got really attacked bad. So I went to my local Walmart. One of the benefits of this class is you'll not only know how to read ingredients labels, but you'll know for certain products, if you're not, you can look it up, what's the key or active ingredient. And for mosquito repellent, it's Z. Now, when I went the first time, and now it's still the same, you go to Walmart, and I'm sure it's true in other places, but this is Walmart, they have a wall of mosquito repellents in the camping area of my local Walmart. And I saw two main ones. One was a name brand off, and another was their house brand. I forgot what they call it. Now, if you look at the bottles, one was a lot less than the other, and that was the Walmart brand. And the Walmart brand was a little bigger. So it's cheaper, bigger, but I wonder, hmm. So I looked at the back and I saw the off had 2% approximately D. The Walmart had 4% D, twice as much. And that's the molecule. I don't know how it keeps mosquitoes off. Maybe they just don't like the smell of it. Who knows? I don't know but I know it's effective. So let's see, should I buy the bottle that's the name brand that costs a lot more and gives you less of the active ingredient or buy the Walmart brand that has twice as much of the key ingredient, gives you more total bottle, bigger, more volume and costs less. Guess what? As they say, it was a no brainer and I bought their brand. I've been using it ever since. And every time I go there, I pick up, still pick up both bottles to look and still the same story, cheaper, more, higher concentration. But these reactions are what we use to make things. All right, now that you've made a amet, what can you do with it? Well, let's look. You can have acid hydrolysis of an amide. And here you take an amide. Oh, excuse me. Remember, unless I override it and I forget to, my software doesn't like putting a carbon in there, bending the line as a carbon. You have an amide plus acid. And for this class, I'm going to stick to the acid HCl. I could use HX, but in real life, it's HCl. Why? So we'll come back to this reaction, but let's talk about it. You get reacted with water, you get back the carboxylic acid you, you would have used to make that amide, but you don't get the amine. Remember, our amines are bases. In the presence of acid, you'll get the amine salt, and that's what you get. And let me write this again. Remember, R prime and R double prime can be hydrogen. And if we react it, and sometimes I'll write it like this. And that means you react this amide with HCl acid, H plus, and water. And what you get back is the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide. Keep your eye on the carbonyl. The R group is still there. And you don't get the amine you would have used to get that, make that amide. You get the amine salt because the amine you get immediately reacts with the acid to give you this. 
Now, this is another important reaction. Oh, come on, Dr. White. You say all reactions are important. Well, in my book, they are. But for you, this is an important one, because later in the semester, I'll teach you this again. But in a specific case, what is that? This is how your stomach and intestine breaks down amino or proteins to amino acids, which I think is pretty important. It helps keep us alive. But for now, let's look at a general or a specific example. And if we look at this, we have what? We have a carbonyl. What's different? Carbon, ooh, nitrogen. Well, carbon's the hydrogen, carbon on here. We have an amide. Remember, R prime and R double prime, one or both or none, can be hydrogen. In this case, it is. And if you react it with acid, HCl, and water, you get back the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide, plus not the amine, but the amine salt. You would have used that. I forget to put that up. Nope, I didn't. For a second, I thought I did. So what's our, this? What's our prime? Either one of these, I call this our prime. And this is our double prime, because don't forget, one or both of those can be hydrogen. So let's look at this. Carbonyl, carbonyl carbon, carbonyl carbon. What's our methyl? We get this, and I should have put a plus sign there on test I will. And then I get this amine salt. And what's our ethyl? And then what's our prime? Hydrogen. And then we add two more hydrogens. And this is a salt, so I have a cation, catch plus charge of nitrogen, and my anion for this is always going to be chlorine. Now, this I could also have written like this. And that's how you make an amide or break it down, acid hydrolysis. And why don't you try this one? What would be the product or products for the following reaction? And oops, hold on. Got that down in time. Dr. White. That's me. Uh, are we not supposed to have a hydrogen um, under the uh, nitrogen? No, 
That's a very good question. Let's take a look at this. Okay, this sorry, I've seen oh, that. It's two metal groups. Oh, did you yeah. see that now? Yeah, thank you. Well, it's a good question. And this way you won't make that mistake on a test. I'm glad you asked that because all questions are good questions. See, I practice what I preach. Even though I'm not a preacher, I'm an organic chemist, but you know that. I guess organic chemists could be preachers too. I'm just not. I am in a way I'm preaching organic chemistry. Oh, this is falling into totally disgusting humor Wednesday. Look out, it's getting dangerous. All right, let's get to work. What do we have here? What's different? Carbonyl with the nitro, and carbons on here, carbons. And what is that? That's an amide. Remember, our prime and our double prime can be. Hydrogen. If I react it with what acid, HCl is hydrochloric acid, and water, I have acid hydrolysis of an amide, and I get back the carboxylic acid plus the amine salt, not the amine. If you put down the amine, I'll mark it wrong, because it is. I'm going to put down X, and I promise for this one, I'll just use HCl. Why? Because that's the acid in your stomach. All right, let's take a look at this example. What's our ethyl? What's our prime and our double prime? Methyl. And therefore, keep your eye on the carbonyl carbon. Our prime is attached. R is attached to it, which is two carbons, carbonyl hydroxyl group. What's our, oops, <laughs> what's our methyl? What's our prime methyl? And then it would have two hydrogens plus charge. You don't have to show your charges. I will. Now this molecule, you could also write like this. And you should be familiar with this. And that's how you do it. Now in test three, like on test number two, I'm gonna have some synthesis problems. And it's your turn. What would you react with HCl, hydrochloric acid, and water to make that molecule?
Ooh, coming attractions next week. I'll get in something you will find a lot of fun. And we'll talk about polymers, especially polymers in your daily life. If you don't know what a polymer is, you'll find out next week. But heads up, my water bottle is made up of a polymer. We talked about that with esters, but we'll get back to it. All right, let's do this. I think everybody's done. And let's look at how do you do this? Well, you look at the products. Remember what you make are called products and you identify the functional group, what's different. Look for what's not carbon, what's not hydrogen or carbon, carbon, single bond. Ooh, two oxygens on the same carbon. And I have carbons, carbonyl, carbon double bond oxygen, hydroxyl group, carboxylic acid. And if we look here, ooh, nitrogen. And it's got R prime nitrogen, R double prime, two hydrogens, and it's got a charge plus charge on the nitrogen and chlorine minus. And what do you react with HCl and water to make that? And the answer is an amide. And now what's the question mark? Well, this is R. One of these I can call R prime and the other R double prime, which means three carbons, carbonyl. Remember this is this, which is this. Then nitrogen, it doesn't matter which is upper to the right, which goes down. Uh-oh, hold on. Let's try this again. Uh. All right, let's see if my computer is gonna burp on me or not. What's our prime? Ethyl, what's our double prime methyl? And I should put in the rest of the hydrogens here. And that's if you take this amide, react it with HCl, hydrochloric acid and water, you will make those two products. And that's how you do it. Now, if I look at my clock, I think let's take a break. I'm going to give you a whole extra 60 seconds. Don't tell anybody I'm being nice. Come back at 2.50. We'll do a little more. We'll do the lab. 
I'll even let you get out early today. Am I nice or am I nice? Don't answer that. All right, I'll see you in five. And some change, actually six minutes.
Let's get going. All right, let's get going. Home stretch. It's Wednesday. And don't forget, if you have any questions, always feel free to come by my office hour tonight or at late afternoon from 5 to 6.15. All right, let's move on. Now, there's another reaction of amides, and that's called base hydrolysis. And this is where you take an amide and the base I'll use for this class, I'll stick to because the most common base is sodium hydroxide and water. And what you get is not the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide, but because that carboxylic acid is an acid in the presence of base, the fastest reaction is an acid-base reaction you get the carboxylate anion you would have used of the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide, but you also get the amine you would have used to make that amide. Amines aren't going to react with base because they're a base. And let me rewrite this. And I can uh, write it like this. And what do we get? Take an amide, base hydrolysis. You get back the carbox carboxylate anion of the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that. Plus, you get the amine you would have used to make that amide. Remember, our prime and our double prime can one, both are non be hydrogen. And if we look at this molecule and react it with sodium hydroxide and water, what would be the two products you would get when you do this reaction? Well, you look at the starting material, what you're starting with, what's different, carbonyl. Remember, look for what's not carbon, hydrogen, or carbon, carbon, single bond, nitrogen to that carbonyl. On the nitrogen, I have R prime and R double prime. On the carbonyl, I have carbons R. Remember, R prime and R double prime can be hydrogen. And we'll react this with space, sodium hydroxide, and water. You get not the carboxylic acid you would have used to make this amide, but the carboxylate anion of that carboxylic acid. And you also get don't forget about the nitrogen, the amine you would have used to make that amide. And this is R. And one of these doesn't matter which I can call R prime, the other R double prime. Therefore, carbonyl, you'll get R in this case is methyl. And you'll get this carboxylate anion. And the mean we get nitrogen. Our prime is methyl. Hydrogen will be on there. Remember, means have three bonds. And then you get this ethyl group. Now, you could have swapped the methyl with ethyl or the methyl with hydrogen or the hydrogen with ethyl. 
each side should have one of these, and that's how you do it. Oh, I should tell you later on when we get into uh, amino acids and proteins, the better drain cleaner to get hair out of your drain, which I'll teach you about, has base in it. Other drain cleaners have acid. Remember your hair is mainly protein, I think all protein, and this breaks it down so you get that clog out of your sink. Trap, works real good. All right, I better let you try one. And here's one for you to try. What two products would you get if you react this molecule with sodium hydroxide and water? Ooh, coming attraction next week. I'm going to spend a little time talking about the dark side of organic chemistry. Yes, the dark side of organic chemistry. I guess right now I'm talking about the white side, the light. <laughs> Oh, I wasn't lying. It's totally disgusting Wednesday humor. And the votes are coming in. I just wondering, thumbs up, people. Can you see on your screen where it says untitled poll? Or is that just me you can see it? OK. I always wondered about that. All right, I think everybody's done, but I'll give you another 10 seconds. Go. Look at the clock with the second hand. Got two of them I can look at. All right, let's do this. Look at the molecule we're starting with. What's different? What's not carbon? What's not hydrogen? What's not a carbon carbon single bond? Ooh, oxygen, nitrogen, oxygen double bond to carbon, carbonyl carbon. The same carbon has nitrogen. On this nitrogen, we have R prime and R double prime. On the carbonyl carbon, we have R. Remember, R prime and R double prime can be. Hydrogen. In this case, one is. So I can call this our prime, our double prime, or you can reverse it, doesn't matter. There's my R group. What happens when you react this with base and water? You get base hydrolysis of an amide, and you get back the carboxylate anion of the carboxylic acid you would have used to make that amide plus the amine you would have used to make that amide. And therefore, if 
I look at my carbonyl R is an isopropyl. oxygen and a plus you don't have to show charges i always will then my nitrogen one r prime is hydrogen uh, methyl our double prime is hydrogen and you get this hydrogen because there's always three bonds to carbon carbon three bonds to carbon. and so let me back that up norp 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 i was just backing up my tape you always have three bonds to nitrogen in an amine in this case. Now you could write it this way, or you could have written it this way. These are identical. Is this different way of writing it? Oh, let's do one more. And what would you react with sodium hydroxide and water to give those two products? Three points each. And like I said, on test three, which I better write soon, every semester I rewrite it because I let students keep their tests. And especially on Zoom, you can. But even when we were face to face, I would let I would pass them back and students could keep them and every semester I'd rewrite them because I know how to do that. And it's time to vote. Who are you going to elect? Yes or no? <laughs> oh, like I said, it's Bad Humor Wednesday. That was low, bad, awful. All right, let's do it. Now, look for what's different in the products. Ooh, oxygen, 
here and here, and we have a carboxylate anion. Ooh, nitrogen is the second one with carbons here and here, and we have an amine. In this case, it's not, but remember R and R prime can one or both or none, in our case it's none, can be hydrogen. And what do you react with sodium hydroxide and water to get a carboxylate anion and a me? And the answer is an amide. Oh, by the way, if you're in England, and yes, I've worked in England, uh, in Littleborough, which is outside of Manchester, which is not far from a cute little village called Chester, which I've spent time in. They call it not amid, uh, how do they pronounce it? Amide. That sound like my English accent? <laughs> not really. All right, so this is R. One of these I can call R prime, the other R double prime, doesn't matter which. So I have R methyl carbonyl nitrogen. One group is ethyl. R prime, R double prime methyl. You can have these reversed, this up here, this down there, that's fine. And that's how you do it. And that's base hydrolysis of an amide. I should point out these synthesis problems. Sometimes you say, well, if I need one of these, is there a way I can get it from something Mother Nature already makes? And you go backwards and say, this is the molecule I would need. And that would help you look, does Mother Nature or someone make it? And you can buy it cheap, because then you can react it to make one of these or both. And guess what time it is? It's lab time. Let's get right into lab. And today's lab deals with carboxylic acids. But first, I've got to open it up. All right, everybody see carboxylic acids lab on your screen? Remember, carboxylic acid, carbonyl, hydroxyl group, R. Now, carboxylic acids can hydrogen bond, but there's another factor in how big R is that might affect the carboxylic acid solubility in water. And in this experiment, you'll take various carboxylic acids so we were face to face, you'd have to find out if it's soluble or not. And you'd put about half of a test tube, small test tube with DI, deionized water. And then you'd put about five, two to five, I'd say, you want to go to seven or eight, you can do that too and have fun in there and then you mix it. Now there are two ways of mixing it. We have these vibro mixers. You take the test tube, put it on there and it shakes real quick and mixes it. Or two, you hold the test tube real firm. This is a large test tube, but you'd have a small one. Go one, two, three, four, and that will mix it. And if it's the same throughout, it's soluble. You see two layers, it's insoluble. And if you notice here, we have four carboxylic acids. Now, I would ask you to look up, and I talked about it briefly, but you can look it up on the internet. What is the structure of stearic and oleic acid? 
Now let's see, did I put it later on? No. Let me ask you right here. Under the name here, draw the structures of the carboxylic acids. And I give you the data, acetic and propanoic are soluble, steric, oleic acids are not. The next one, we're gonna be, if we were face-to-face, -face, I'd be telling you, we're gonna be working with some very, very, very dangerous substances now. And remember, carboxylic acids are acids, and sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, is a base. And remember, we went through this earlier today, but I'll put it up on, on write it on the lab. That's supposed to be an arrow. Let me try that again. That's a better looking arrow. And when you react the carboxylic acid with baking powder, sodium bicarbonate, you get the carboxylate anion, CO2, the arrow up means given off as a gas and water. And remember when you add a base, to an acid, this gets neutralized. And if we are face to face, I'd say, this is a lab, you're gonna find out is Dr. White lying to you or not? Is our carboxylic acids really acids? Now, when you have something that's acidic and you add a base to it, the pH should increase. Well, we'll find out. And what the way we did have you do this is you take a dry beaker, add about 10 milliliters of DI water, DI means deionize, add about one to two milliliters about two thirds of an eyedropper or uh, paste or salad, three grams or just a, a dab or dollop of it, oh, that doesn't sound scientific. And then you'll mix it and measure the pH using pH paper. And when you put it in there, put it in, well, before you do that, mix the water with whatever you're gonna test, measure the pH, add a good amount of sodium bicarbonate, mix it and measure the pH and also observe what you see. Now, what chemicals are we using? I have acetic acid, but what we really use is, and I would tell you in class, vinegar, which is a mixture of acetic acid and water. Then another dangerous chemical, lemon juice. And then this one's really dangerous, tomato paste, and then stearic and oleic acids. If you want to watch, you can see them on these YouTube videos. Now, finally, we're going to look at the reaction of acetic, oleic, and stearic acid with certain carboxylic acid or certain base, and then react that product with magnesium sulfate. And let me show you on the whiteboard what's going on. Now, if you take a carboxylic acid and react it with a base, you'll form the carboxylate anion. Now, this is step one. 
And when it's all reacted, you'll have phenolphthalein in there and it will turn pink. And that means you've made this. Once you've made that, you'll take it and do what's, oops. An ion exchange reaction where you react it with magnesium sulfate. And what you get is this carboxylate anion of magnesium plus two, because this is a magnesium plus two, plus sodium sulfate. Now over here, this carboxylate anion, if we forget about the cation, has a certain molecular weight. And over here, this right here has twice that molecular weight. Will that affect its solubility? Well, I'll sort of give it away, but let's go back. First of all, make sure you write this down. Or you can always come back and watch it on the video again in YouTube, which will be later tonight. Post it. Um, Dr. White. Yes. This um, is the way you have the carboxylate um, anion. The second step, is it two of it, two moles of it, or just two, um, step two? The two in front of it, is it? That two moles means, of that or? That means two moles of this. Okay. After one mole of that to make one mole of this and one mole of that. And the reason okay. you need the two here is because you're going to end up with two on this side to have it balanced. This is one of those rare times I'm going to balance it. When I didn't put the two right here, students got really upset. Why are you okay. doing that? And the last thing I want in my life is upset students or anybody upset. Doesn't have to be a student. All right, let's go back and look at this. Now, in here, you're going to react this first acetic acid with sodium hydroxide, and you observe a clear homogeneous solution. And when you add the magnesium sulfate, it stays clear. It does react though. Students ask me, oh, did this react or not? No, oleic acid, when you add sodium hydroxide, it becomes clear. And when you form react the solution, the second one with magnesium sulfate, you get a white solid. And this one, let's play the video. I'm gonna play the YouTube video for you. I don't know what this is time for. If you want to eat healthy and feel your best, you've got to try Kachava. Kachava is the world's healthiest all-in-one meal shake. No, we don't. Hold on one second. It's an angle with Trichomy Water Conditioning out of Hutchinson and Fire Lake. And I'm here today just to show you the difference that hard water and soft water have on your detergents and cleaning supplies you're using. So what we're gonna do here today is just add three drops of just pure soap solution so it doesn't have all the additives that you'd see um, at a retail store. So we're gonna add three drops to the hard water beaker here. And then we're gonna add three drops. The soap is like your sodium hydroxide solution. What I'm gonna do is just make soft a, one. basically a washing machine and we're gonna shake these two up. You don't have first. to shake it up, you can just mix it. And here are the 18 grains hardness we have in fire lake water. So not much effect on the three drops of soap solution we added here. Here's the soft water. Much different sound. Actually, it's cloudy. You can see all the suds that we're getting. 
Beautiful. Get into that one. And if we even add another six drops of the hard water, we'll just see if we get any more effect. Notice this is the bottom is clear. Savings you're going to get having soft water as opposed to hard water. Because your soap solutions are basically fighting the hard water and you're not getting any results from that. So we get a little bit here, but it's slowly. See how it's cloudy this side. So now we kind of zoom in a little bit on the hard water. You can actually see your soap scum build up. On see the, the solid the there? So that's where you're seeing the build up in your shower. Hold on. Shower doors, shower, shower curtains. And also that detergent isn't able. And what you did, that solid with the oleic acid, you made, and I'd be going around the lab telling, asking students, hold up your Erlenmeyer. And I ask them, what is in there? And they're looking, I'm not sure. I said, guess what? You've just made soap scum, like in your bathtub. And we get into fats and oils in two chapters. I'll go more into detail. And with that, let me take a look at the lab with you. You do the questions at the end. And we're just about caught up. Hold on. We're just about caught up. So I can say, I'm done. Gang is on. Goodbye. I'll see you on Monday unless you come to my office hour. And with that, we're done. Gang is on. Goodbye. Have a nice rest of the week and weekend. Have fun. And I'll see you on Monday, unless you have any questions. I'll stick around for a minute or two, or you can also come to my office hour.